Uh, my name is Leah, grateful, compulsive overeater and bulimic. I weigh and measure three meals a day off the gray sheet, commit it to my sponsor, don't eat in between no matter what. And abstinence by the grace of God is the most important thing in my life. I do this without exception. And at my absence date, thank God, is 6th of November, 2020. Um, so <laughs> this has been the busiest three weeks, past three weeks of my life. Um, the UK has started to open up again out of lockdown. So life is kind of opening up again. And I have to say, it's such a joy and a gift to have this qualification coming tonight because right now I'm feeling so unqualified <laughs> to do most other things in my life. And I can qualify in here. Um, so I'm going to start <laughs> by doing that. And then hopefully, hopefully, look, if someone's in a position that I was in for 29 years, um, they can, they can qualify into, and they can be one of us, which is the best, I think the best group to be part of. So, uh, this is what it was like. I'm going to kind of let you know how it started. I haven't done this yet. What was it like when I was growing up? So I was addicted to carbs in the womb. Um, cause I know like a lot of normal people when I was pregnant, she's like, cool, I'm just going to eat everything. And all the really like, you know, high octane stuff that I don't normally eat cause I'm vain, which like fine respect to my mom. Um, but I was born like a, I was, I was born like a food addict baby, you know, I couldn't handle it. And, uh, I remember you know, it says in the big book, like dire warnings. I remember like right when I first learned how to read, looking at a, on the nutrition label on like a carbohydrate packet and it said the serving size. And I was like, that can't be true. Like, I don't know how to read. I know I'm like five or six. I probably just don't understand this label because that's not a serving size. And I was five. Like I should have been eating less than a serving size, but I was eating all of it. And um, I learned to cook and to bake from a very young age because I wanted to be in charge of the food. And food also was such a good buffer and it kept me so safe from all the chaos and all the craziness and all the people. Um, I have a lot of social anxiety and and I'm just challenging family. And, um, you know, I, I once heard in a meeting, someone said that they got all the promises from the food. There were a lot of other consequences, but the food really worked. Oh my gosh. It made me feel so much better. And, um, it worked, it worked for a little while, like, you know, pretty well. Cause I think people thought it was like kid food to feed kids things we don't eat. And then I got to a certain age maybe four, <laughs> it wasn't that old. And I started to be too overweight. And now my doctor's really concerned and talking to my mom about it. And so my mom's like, oh, well, I'll sign her up for dance class, which is like, let's think about how to traumatize a child. You take a really overweight, really like uncoordinated kid with ADHD and you put her in ballet yeah, do that. That's great. Like, good. Cause if you wanted me to become who I am, that's exactly what you needed to do. So from about, I think I was actually three or like maybe younger than three. Cause there's pictures of me wearing really flashy recital costumes and like being way bigger than all the other girls. Um, it's really funny now though. So it's fine. Anyhow, that was really my life. Um, just eating a lot of eating a lot of, um, uh, a lot of being bullied for being overweight, um, not really knowing how to interact with people, not really knowing, you know, my family was kind of a weird environment for learning how to be in the world and learning how to be normal with people. So I know to be weird and, uh, that got me bullied. <laughs> um, and again, like I just remember lunchtime and really loving getting to go to lunch at school. Um, and getting to have snacks with my friends, like my really weird friends, but there were snacks, so it was fine. 
Um, but once I got to be a teenager, I started to really care that I looked weird. Thank you, Aga. Thank you. Um, and I got really obsessed with controlling my food. Um, I know now I have a medical condition that makes it really hard for me to lose weight. So actually like I could try as hard as I wanted. That was almost never going to happen for me. Um, but I'd say from about like 11 or 12 to 25, I just tried to cut whole food groups out. There were things I just didn't let myself eat. I was a vegan. I was a raw organic vegan. There's not a lot of raw organic food out there. So I wasn't really eating that much food, but I was still overweight. Um, and then when I was 24, 25, um, I discovered purging. And that felt like a solution because I was a food addict. So I was like, yeah, that's a really good idea. I'm going to throw out my food and then I'd be thin and then I can eat all this food. But I had cut out kind of sensibly, I'd cut out the high octane stuff. And when I became bulimic, it was like, oh, I can eat that stuff now. And that was really dangerous because especially in the States where there's in the EU, we have regulations and there's some food in America that's actually illegal in England. But, um, oh my God, I just, my life fell apart. And I was, I'm not even, I haven't even spoken of all the harms I've caused before I was bulimic, but it's like, I turned up the dial on the addiction with the bulimia and I was no longer in the world. I was, I was basically drunk or high all the time. Um, but also really selfish. And so I needed my life to look really perfect on the outside and whatever it took to look perfect on the outside, it didn't matter like how much I had to lie and manipulate. And really, I mean, I really, ugh, looking at it now and we'll get there. But anyway, goodness gracious, by the end, and this is the end in Gracie, I came to Gracie still, you know, I, I did, I came into Gray Sheet and I got a little bit of abstinence and that was an absolute miracle and a testament to an incredible sponsor and this magical meal plan, obviously. Um, but when I relapsed in Gray Sheet, because I'm a food addict, I didn't get it back right away. It doesn't work like that, even though I thought it would. And so there were points in my food addiction in the last five years when just, I would lose days, weeks, just or either ordering food or all I could do, the only reason for getting dressed was to go to the grocery store, get food, bring it back, purge, keep that cycle going. And, um, you know, we're about to go on, on vacation, on holiday. I would go on holiday with my husband and then he'd just be there with a person who was just binging and purging and binging. And he's like, can we do anything? You know, on my honeymoon, like, can we go out for, we were in the Alps in like amazing walking country. And he would go out on walks by himself because I would eat breakfast and I was powerless. I didn't, at that point, I didn't know I was eating food I was allergic to. So I'd eat breakfast and then the physical allergy would come on. And I, had, I, I was, I was powerless and I had no choice. Um, I found out where all the grocery stores are. If you want to know in Lech, there's two, they're tiny because Lech, it, Lech is like a postage stamp, but I know where they sell all the cold carbohydrates in Lech. Um, and that it was what my life was like. And then thank God. So I was in another food. I basically, I came into food fellowship. Thank God. Um, I went into another one first. It didn't work for me because I didn't know what my allergies were. You guys did, but I didn't know about you yet. I didn't know about Gray Sheet. Um, so I found out about Gray Sheet from uh, a fellow that I knew from a big book study and um, came into Gray Sheet. And the second I went on to the Gray Sheet meal plan, it was like I had stopped drinking. Like I was sober. I was sort of sober, right? Because now I know it's sober. <laughs> it's like more abstinence, more sobriety. Um, and that was unbelievable. I made an error 59 days in. And when my sponsor sent me back to day one, my disease was like, just, just use, you know, you're on day zero. Tomorrow you're on day one. Eat the stuff you miss. And uh, yeah, it doesn't work like that. So I did it that night and then I didn't stop. And, uh, that time I almost died. So please God, you know, I don't get, I'm not going to get another one. And so hopefully that was my last relapse. 
please God. One day at a time. Okay. Thank you, Aga. So I'm going to talk a little bit about what it's like today. Um, the truth is I'm really not that different today. I'm exactly the same person. The only difference is that I'm not eating between my meals anymore. I'm not eating anything if it's not on the gray sheet. I don't eat it if it's not weighed and measured, if I didn't commit it to my sponsor, right? I do what we all do. I'm not drunk anymore is basically the only thing I can say about myself, but I'm still the same person. Um, and so what it means right now is I'm cleaning up my past because drunk people make really big messes and I'm trying to kind of heal forward. Um, and I just want to share something that happened yesterday, happened yesterday, not today. Um, so the thing that I do for a living, it involves having a very specific qualification and the qualifications are different depending upon the country. So I came here and I spent two years figuring out what that qualification was and making sure I had it, doing my due diligence. And I met with someone yesterday who I need to help me. I'm gonna get really convoluted. I met with a supervisor yesterday to talk about supervising me for this thing that I do. And she challenged my qualifications. And she said I was doing something unethical and I should probably you know, stop everything that I was doing. And this conversation led me to challenge my qualification in every respect. How qualified am I even to speak at meetings, right? Because I go to a big book study and they have all these qualifications. You have to have a certain amount of big book under your belt and a certain amount of abstinence. And like, dude, I'm not spiritually recovered to speak at that meeting, like an actual meltdown. And the thought that occurred to me during that meltdown was, I'm qualifying at a meeting tomorrow, the word qualifying, because I'm qualified to speak at Gracie. And because I am an addict, because I have so many little funny, complicated things in my brain, I can complicate anything and I can beat myself up with anything except for my gray sheet abstinence. That is why I'm here because it's black and white. I don't do my own thinking around the food ever, right? I call someone else to make decisions around my food. So it's not actually my thinking. I, you know, I don't think about the scale big or little. I hand it over to my sponsor. And because of that, that's how I'm able to be abstinent one day at a time, like just for today, thank God. And so unusually, although normally, if I were going to be in that kind of high octane, stressful meltdown kind of a position, I normally would have picked up, right? Like in any other situation, I would have picked up. Okay, there's a passport situation you know, live right now. Okay, um, but I didn't, and it and it actually didn't occur to me because in that moment I saw that I valued being uh, in this family, being a graciator, getting to carry this message. It just it was it, it was abundantly clear, and that is not because of me. That's because of this program. It's because you know, for me, I work the steps. I work them really hard. It's a lot of what I do with my time at the moment is I really work the steps. Um, I go to meetings. I, I When I first came in, I made so many phone calls. I had a great sponsor and she made me make phone calls. If I didn't get someone on the phone, it doesn't matter if I called three people, three people had to answer me. And that's how I learned how to do gray sheet. It's how I learned how to eat and to live and, um, and it, it, I heard someone say gray sheets like learning a new language and not like a familiar one. It's like learning a new alphabet and a new language and a new culture. And it really is. And that's why the phone calls were so helpful because I was enveloped in this culture, going to meetings every day and, and just and meeting all of you. And it's, it's magnificent. Um, I've had a lot of no matter what's in the last six months, especially working the steps. It'll expose you to all all of the garbage that you've done to people. And that's really hard to sit with. Um, but it's also, it's for me, the way that I'm able to stay abstinent, not just have a life we're living, but a life beyond my wildest dreams. 
Um, I'm still really undisciplined. I'm working on having a, a daily practice. I'm lucky enough now to live with someone who's also in program and we've decided to do what the big book says, which is um, like, what is it? It says husband in the big book. Thank you, Aga. Um, but I'm not a husband, I'm a wife. So, you know, anyway, I'm rambling and it's my time. So thank you guys. I'll leave it there.